Finding the intersection points of two functions is a lot like solving a system of linear equations. It's just that now we use function notation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. Jin and Kendra are running a long distance race. Jin starts at the starting line and runs at eight kilometers an hour, so that's her rate. Kendra gets a head start of 20 kilometers, but she only runs at a very slow three kilometers per hour. When, if ever, will Jin pass Kendra? So that's what the problem is asking for. When will Jin pass Kendra? So let's take a look at what we can um, put into function notation here. And what we're really asking for when someone passes another person is when their distances are the same. So let's first think of Jin's distance. And we're going to make a function. We're going to use j of t for Jin, and t of course is time. And what we know about Jin is that she starts at the starting line and she runs eight kilometers every hour. So her distance is eight t. Now how about Kendra? Let's make a function k of t for Kendra. And she moves at three kilometers per hour, but she got a head start of 20 kilometers. So now the question is, when do these two distances equal one another? And so what we do is we just set the two functions equal to each other. j of t equals k of t. And so we can take j of t, well we know that's equal to 8t, and we set that equal to k of t, which is 3t plus 20. And then we can subtract 3t from both sides, and so that will give us 5t equals 20. Divide by 5, and we see that t equals 4. So after 4 hours, uh, Jin will pass Kendra, very much like a system of linear equations. Let's take a look at the graph. So here's a graph of the two functions. Which function is which? Well, you can see that one of them has a starting value of 20 and has a slower rate of change, so that must be Kendra. And the other one has a starting value of 0, no head start for Jin, but she has a faster rate of change. And right here on the graph, you can see that there's an intersection point. So let's go ahead and label that intersection point. We know that the intersection point is when t equals 4, and we can see that that's indeed right when t equals 4. And we can see, read from the graph, that it's probably at about, let's see, 20, 25, 30, 35. I'm not exactly sure what that increment is, but we know that we could solve that. And we, so we go ahead and label this as 4, and we'll fill in the actual distance later. Now the interesting thing here is that we can answer some questions really easily with the graph. During what time period is Kendra ahead of Jin, and how do we know? Well, remember <coughs> that Kendra is the one who has the head start, and her distance is going to be greater than Jin for this time period here, because the y-axis here is distance, and this is time. So when the purple line is greater than the orange line is when Jin is ahead of Kendra, and then when the orange line is ahead of the purple line is when Kendra is ahead of Jin. Now, the final question here, when are Jin and Kendra at the exact same distance, and how can we find that point without graphing? So remember, we can graph this and it shows us a lot of information, but it was a little bit hard for me a minute ago to figure out exactly what the distance was at that point. So the way that we find that point when they're at the exact same distance is to go ahead and find the intersection point by setting the functions equal to each other. And the only thing we need to do to fill in that missing value there is to substitute our value of t equals 4 into either equation. So let's go ahead and put it in for the first equation, because that will be easiest. So we can say that j of 4 equals 8 times 4 equals 32. And just to make sure, let's check k of 4. It equals 3 times 4 plus 20 
And indeed, 3 times 4 is 12 plus 20. That's also 32. So we can go ahead and write in the graph now 32. And that's the intersection point of our two functions.